Hey everyone, Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies. I have a pretty cool video to go over with you today because I received a pre-release of Enphase's IQ EV charger. Now this is their first generation in the smart EV charger space since their acquisition of Clipper Creek a year or two ago. Now the benefit of this IQ EV charger really comes down to it being integrated within the Enphase and Lighten app and being able to see what's going on with the solar and the batteries and your home's consumption all within one platform. Now, I'm gonna showcase this, but if this is a product you're interested in having us install, please be sure to use the link down in the description below so you can request a quote. It won't be available from my understanding until November or December of this year, but we can definitely at least put you on a pre-order list so that way we can get you this charger when it does become available. All right, so let's talk about the installation of this charger. It's pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot of components related to it. Basically within the box, I received the charger, the charging cable. This was the NEMA 1450 outlet version. So it had the plug already pre-wired up and ready to plug into the outlet that I had installed at my house. The mounting of it, it does come with two lag bolts and you just have to top and bottom, put it on a stud. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, there is a little gun holster for the charging cable that you can use. And um, I, I didn't install that because I just think it's ugly. Now, the commissioning is something I really got to give Enphase credit for. So they're not relying on an installer to commission the EV charger or connect it to the internet. It's actually done on the uh, homeowner side of the Enlighten app. So when you have an Enphase system, you have your Enlighten app. Your app is different than the app we have as installers. Our apps give us more functionalities for commissioning uh, Enphase gateways, the IQ system controllers, the IQ batteries, and so on and so forth. Um, but it won't have the capability of commissioning the EV charger. That is done on your side, which is really cool because they made it super streamlined, which is nice to see in comparison to how their solar equipment is com commissioned. So basically, once you have your Enphase system, you'll go under menu, uh, you'll be able to see a setting that says add devices, you'll click on that, it'll show IQ EV charger. This is an area where I think they're expanding into smart home, so you might see more components within this area later on as they continue to roll out more smart home capabilities and products. So you'll click on IQ EV charger, you scan the QR code on the side of the EV charger, your device is gonna connect to it via Bluetooth, and then you'll connect it to your home network. And voila, it's attached to your Enlighten account and it's connected to your home network so you can adjust your charge settings anywhere in the world right from in the Enlighten app. Uh, the next couple steps kind of ask you what type of EV you have, what do you want to name your charger, and then if you want to set some time of use parameters, What's really nice that Enphase has is they actually, since they're a solar manufacturer in this space, they actually have the time of use rate schedules built in from different utility providers. So I live in Southern California Edison's territory and I have time of use four to nine D prime. So I was able to just boom, select it and it automatically knows at 4 p.m. don't charge the car. I mean, I can just plug it in and it'll charge the car automatically um, just right off the bat. Now there will be other settings that weren't available while I was beta testing it, but from my understanding from Enphase, they will be releasing a software setting that will allow you to charge only from excess solar energy. And I think there's a great deal of value in that feature. So basically what I mean is let's say your home's consuming 500 watts and your solar is generating 5,000 watts. So you would typically send 4,500 kilowatts uh, to the grid, 4,500 watts to the grid. Well, instead of sending it to the grid, you plug it into your car and it goes into the car. That is a great feature, uh, I think. So your car is just charging up from the excess solar energy rather than just sending it to the grid and then you're charging from the grid during an off-peak time so if you're, if you're able to do that, not everybody you know, is gonna be home during solar production, but maybe you come home from lunch. My wife comes home from lunch with her Audi and she can just plug it in and give it a little bit of a trickle charge for the half hour to an hour that she's home. So being able to do that and just charge directly from the solar is a really nice feature. 
Like I said, it wasn't in my beta testing software, so I didn't get to see how that functionality would work. But ultimately, I thought it was pretty clean. It showed me my solar production, home consumption, uh, and then in the center for my home, I was able to expand that and see the EVs consumption separate from the home consumption. So I got to really, it, it pulls that out, which I think is really unique. And then as you scroll to the bottom, it shows you how many kilowatt hours uh, you've put into the car. Now, one thing I kind of would gripe about with the Enphase EV charger was I didn't see any software level control to adjust the charging rate or the charging power. So this is a unit that's NEMA 1450 compatible, whether it's hardwired or plug-in. I would have expected to be able to get the maximum charging rate for it being on a NEMA 1450 or 50 amp circuit breaker. So that would be about 40, 42 amps. That should be around 9.6 to 10 kilowatts of continuous power. I couldn't get more than 32 amps. It was 7.6 kilowatts. Couldn't figure out anywhere in the software that would allow me to get more power out of it. And I kind of saw that as a little bit of a sour point because that's basically just connecting it to a 40 amp breaker. So I, I, if you, I wanted the full rating of it and I wanted control to be able to adjust it. So I am disappointed that feature wasn't available right out the gate, but I am hoping that they will have that capability later on um, within the EV charger, you never know. So uh, they do plan on doing some other software configurations. So if you have batteries, it knows not to charge from your batteries into your EV in the evenings, which is really cool. So it, it being fully integrated will have a lot of customization, obviously, I'm doing a pre-release, this was a beta test, just to make sure, hey, how did the commissioning experience go? How does it look in the app so far? And then where are other things that we need to improve upon? So I think as they release this product and hopefully roll out the necessary software configurations for the platform, I think it's going to be an awesome EV charger for all of our Enphase customers that have Enphase solar and Enphase batteries because this charger being fully integrated and giving you these types of customizations within the platform so you can charge just from excess solar and not deplete your batteries into the car is really valuable. So if you're interested in getting this product or getting on a pre-order list, be sure to use this, the link down in the description below. We will definitely be you know, creating a list so that way when the product becomes available from Enphase in November or December of this year, we can reach out to you, give you the actual price of what it'll cost because I don't know at this time, but I don't think it's gonna be absurd. It should be in line with most of the market. Right now, Enphase EV chargers, just those standard Clipper Creeks. I believe this model, like the non-smart version, is like $760 before installation. So if you're an existing customer, we would definitely hook you up with a great installation price to make it easy. Whether or not you have the NEMA 1450 outlet will determine how cheap we can do it for you. But uh, yeah, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, I will be in Las Vegas next week for RE+. This is going to be one of the biggest expos of the year and I'm super excited to be there and we're going to be releasing content while we're out there. We're going to be releasing content over the next few weeks after the expo. There's going to be so many things we are covering from solar panels to other microinverters to battery technology to EV chargers to portable batteries. Uh, I mean we are covering so many things and uh, I'm really excited to be going out to Las Vegas for this expo. There's supposed to be like nearly 10,000 exhibitors, uh, I think. I mean, it's crazy. And we, here's, the, here's the kicker. Tesla might be announcing the Powerwall 3 out there. That is a rumor, and it's really rare to see Tesla with a booth, but they have a huge booth at the expo. So there's a lot of rumors going around that they will be announcing the Powerwall 3 at this event, which would be freaking insane to do in Vegas. So be sure to subscribe because you can bet your butt if they do, we will be covering it live. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.